Ho! Okay, we've been doing lots of fun with Fabric SQL databases. Today, we're going to be talking about SQL functions. Specifically, we're going to get into string functions, date functions, number functions. What else we got here? What else is on the... All sorts of stuff. I got, I got a whole list of stuff right here that we're going to be talking about. I can't wait to show it to you. Let's get to it. All right, if you want to support the channel and you got a couple extra bucks for five bucks a month, you can get early access to all this content. I'd really appreciate if you signed up. All right, let's talk our first function. All right, so we're using the AdventureWorks database again, um, you know, which I've got videos out on, on how to go get that from like a SQL server uh, out there. Get that set up before you get into this one. Uh, but we're going to start pretty simple here. We're going to be using three tables, dim customer, dim date, and fact internet sales. Okay. First query though, we're going to be using some string functions is what we're going to be delving into here. Okay. So first function here, we're going to be using an upper or first name, right? So that's just the first name. Okay. All right. Just as is this field will show us just blank what it is upper bracket first name as upper name, what this is going to do, this upper function is going to take all of the letters in the first name and capitalize it. Okay. Len is, is short for length. The length function will give you the length of the first name. And this concat, this is the concatenation function. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a first name, we're going to take a space and a last name, and we're going to combine that all together to create a full name. All right. So these are some of your basic string functions. As you can see, this would be super useful as we, as we look into this stuff, right? Like first name, last name is great. Understanding name length. Okay. That's cool. I could see why you might use it, but look at that guy, right? Oh, come on now. This one right here, that full name, that concatenated full name that if you could push this into SQL instead of in Power Query or try to do it in Power BI somehow, this will make your life so much easier to, to, to build out like a first full name like, or I'm sorry, a full name like this, not a full name, okay? These are just a handful of the, the string functions that are out there. There is a whole bunch of other ones, but this is just your first example, all right? Let's talk about some date functions here, okay? Date functions are going to be incredibly useful, especially when you're creating your, your date dimension. Now, I've already got a date dimension out there, but I'm just going to show you some of the stuff if you're trying to do some like quick math, right? So in this case, we're going to be taking, uh, again, we've got order date, which is just the base order date. The next, the next field that we're going to be going and querying, we're going to apply the year function onto order date. So we're just, what do you think we're going to get? That's right, the year. I feel like Dora the Explorer. <laughs> Dora the Explorer. Um, so you get you get the year with the year function. Oh, oh God bless it. <laughs> month is gonna give us the month of the order date, right? And then date name, it's gonna be day of the week. All right. So if we go ahead and we run this one, let's go and take a look at what we got. It's a little interesting that it's date name and not day name, right? So the base value that we started with is order date. The next one we, that we use the year function with is order year. Then we use the month function and we got the, the order month. And here you can see we use the, um, uh, the date or was it date name to get the day of the week right there. All right. Pretty cool, huh? There's th again, these are just a handful of the date functions that are out there. You can go check out a whole bunch of other ones there. Uh, combining these together and helping you build out uh, like actual queries with this can help with your date dimension. It can also help if you need to create some like paginated reports where you like combine information with the T SQL that's just running straight back against your gold or maybe even your silver or bronze layers. This these types of functions can really help you out. Um, now, it'll always help you out in uh, Fabric SQL Database as is, so, you know, that's just fine. Okay, let's talk about some math functions that we can do. All right, so here we go. Again, oops, here we are. 
again, we're, we're going to select sales amount. This is the base value that we're going to be able to compare back to. First function we're going to apply is the round function. This is going to round sales amount to zero decimal places. Okay. Floor. This is going to give you the floor of that sales amount. Ceiling is going to give you the ceiling of that sales amount. Now, this is going to be kind of interesting because normally you'd want to aggregate it, but you could actually see here, look at this. You could see, okay. So we could see this, the sales amount here is $4.99, right? The rounded amount is $5. So that rounds up to uh, five dollars, the floor value for that. What's the what's the what's the whole value at the floor? It's going to be four dollars. I mean, you take off ninety nine cents, but sometimes you need that. Or we have the ceiling value, which would be the five dollars. Okay. All, again, th that's with using the round floor and ceiling math functions. You can do a lot of different functions inside of T-SQL. Please do check these out and explore them, okay? Now, a lot of times we get data, and data is not necessarily as clean or as pure as we want. And so sometimes you've got pesky data without any information in it. So let's take a look at this one. So if we talk about our phone number here, now I happen to know there's no nulls in this, so it doesn't quite... It's not as helpful, um, but I could say, hey, I will give me the phone number from the customer table here, but I can leverage is null to say, hey, if the phone number itself is null, return no phone listed. This is hugely valuable, especially as you start to create your, your data sets and start to create your dimensions, uh, like coming up with what you're going to do for null values and, and using it a consistent way in your reporting can be incredibly helpful. So I'm going to hit run on this. And again, because I have, because I have phone numbers for all of my customers in this table, uh, it's not super helpful. You can't see it, but like, that's how that works, okay? Now, the next big thing that you might need to do is you might need to change the data type uh, that you're working with in a query in order to get it to function or behave the way that you want it to, okay? So in this case, we're gonna be taking sales amount and we're gonna be changing sales amount into of var char 20 so that we have sales as text okay this is another thing that can be incredibly useful especially combined with like the, the other like math functions in helping you create categorizations and text space integer category you know data categorizations that you can use inside of your reporting okay so if you're trying to understand like uh, whose sales are between these values and create a dimensional like bucketing system uh, inside your reports, this can be really useful, okay? So I'm gonna run this and take a look at what happens, okay? So if I scroll down, you can see sales amount here, it's 499.00. It's 34.9900, right? This This has four decimal places on it. This, the sales text, oh, and you can actually see it as like a decimal right there. Sales text is an ABC, that's returning a text value. And these are all of the text values that you see from, uh, that you you know, you can find parallel here and there, right? So they're, they're the same between the two, okay? Now, um, now, these are your base, some of your most basic functions. There is a ton that you can do with this stuff. In fact, you, you not only can you do this stuff, you can actually do some, and this is kind of a bonus, this goes above and beyond. You can actually do some nesting of functions, okay? So sometimes you're gonna get data and everything is, you know, some of the some of the records are gonna be in up, uppercase, some are gonna be in uh, proper case name, and you need to have like some consistency in, 
You know, when you write out a letter to Mrs. Jones, right? Mrs. Jones doesn't want to sometimes be all capital and sometimes be a proper case. Well, this is a great way to do this. So what we're doing in this query is we're creating this proper case name in which we're going to take, first off, let's start, we, we're not going to start at the outside. We're going to start at the inside. Okay, so we're going to take in the first name, we're, uh, we're going to do left one. What this does is this is going to take the leftmost character in first name, and then it's going to apply an upper function to it, right? So my name's Chris. This is going to, the first, first letter in, in that is a C. It's going to make it upper, right? So we're going to be uppercase C, okay? And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to then concatenate that C with this other set of values right over here. Let me zoom over to that so you can clearly see that. And in this one, I've got to do something interesting. I'm going to take the rightmost values from first name, but the question is how many characters do I need to get, right? Like my name is Chris, but if your name was Ben, you'd only need two. I need four, you need two. So what we're going to do is we're going to use that length function to say, okay, give me the length of the first name minus one is going to be how far from the right we get the, the values. And then we've wrapped that all in in parentheses, and then we're going to make sure that those low, those are lower cases, and then concatenate those two together. So when I run that query, I'm actually going to see that everyone is coming through exactly as I would want them to. All right. Pretty cool, huh? These are some basic SQL functions that can get you up and running, get you started. There is a whole catalog of functions out there. Just Google them. There's tons of them. Um, uh, it's great to be able to access them, understand them. Just even knowing that these exist can really help you, especially like when you're talking with Copilot or AIs and helping you write SQL. This can help you come up with better prompts if you know that you're gonna what you're gonna want to do. You can tell the prompt, "Hey, I need to concatenate." you know, first and last name to come up with full name, right? And by speaking and knowing this context, it can uh, even generate better AI, all right? Hopefully you found this useful. If you did, or if you have questions, uh, like leave a comment down below, let me know how you liked it. Hit that thumbs up button, it really does help me out. Uh, and share this with anyone else you know that's trying to learn SQL. Hopefully this can get you up and running. I'm showing it in Fabric SQL Database. This will technically work in any SQL Server environment for you. Um, you should be uh, good to go. And, and a lot of this base functionality will work in any SQL environment. All right? Now, you have the best day ever. Peace. All right. So this is a lot, but if you need help, don't worry. I'm a consultant. I got a team of consultants. We're over here at Baker Tilly. We can help you out on projects big and small. Um, just head over to bakertilly.com slash digital. Click, out the, click on the little form to fill out, and someone will get a hold of you right away. All right? Uh, otherwise, check out these videos. Maybe they'll help you with the challenges you're having. All right? All right? Have a great day.